In this screencast, we're going to talk about how to get Laravel 3 up and running on AppFog. Uh, Laravel 4 came out a few months ago, and I haven't really gotten a lot of time to play with it. So uh, the same procedure should work for Laravel 4, but, uh, but we'll see later on. I may do another screencast on how to do it just for Laravel 4. Uh, so I've got an AppFog account here. I don't have any apps or any services or any of that stuff. This is the free account. Uh, if you haven't tried AppFog, I really do suggest that you check it out. It's really nice. Uh, they've just recently added a, um, a more affordable developer paid plan. It's about 20 bucks a month, uh, and it gives you you know a lot of good features. It's really nice. It's a great alternative to uh, your own dedicated server, a virtual private server, or shared hosting especially. So uh, I'd highly recommend you look it up. So the first thing you need to do is install the AppFog command line tool. Uh, and if you go into their documentation, uh, there's a getting started guide on how to do that. So I'm not going to go through that. I already have it installed on my computer. Uh, I'm just going to try to get Laravel up and running as quickly as I can. So I'm going to open up my terminal here. And I'm going to CD to my desktop. And let's see. Actually, I first need to grab Laravel. Uh, that would help. So Laravel 3 has, it's not so much been deprecated, but it's, there's still documentation you can access. Uh, this just, they're trying to get 4 out there as much as they can. So if you want to download Link, the easiest way to do it is to just go to their GitHub page. Uh, GitHub.com slash Laravel slash Laravel, and then click on this releases link. Now these are all their Git tags for all their release versions. So if you click on that, there'll be a link to the latest uh, 3 version, you can see 4.0.5 is the latest uh, during the time of this recording. Uh, and then 3.2.14 is the latest version of 3 that they've released. And probably will release. Uh, so I'm going to click on the zip file link here and just download Laravel 3. Uh, and then I'm going to open up that zip file. And I'm going to drag this onto my desktop. And I'm just going to rename this folder to L3. Um, okay, so let's see. Now if I list, I'll CD into my L3 folder here. And here's Laravel. So let's push this up to AppFog. Uh, so if you have the command line tool installed, all you're going to have to do is type AF and then login. And we'll ask you for your AppFog credentials. I'm going to type in my email address, my password. And I should be good to go. Okay, so now I can do things like uh, AF um, apps, and it will list all the apps that I have on AppFog. I can do tons of things. Uh, if you type AF help, it'll list all these commands. Uh, it's really cool. You can actually get like the status of some of your applications, the health of them. You can update them. Um, you can update the infrastructure you're using. It's really cool. So I'm going to say AF push since I don't have any apps I can't update any I'm gonna say AF push just click enter and so it's gonna ask me would you like to deploy from the current directory you're in and I'll say yes I'll just click enter for the default now I can set an application name so this would just be the name of your app that you're hosting uh, I'm gonna type Laravel 3 test detected a PHP application you are correct I'm gonna click enter uh, where do you want it hosted? On uh, AWS Virginia, AWS uh, West, um, Singapore, Las Vegas. Uh, I'm gonna just select uh, AWS on the East Coast, just I don't just cause just cause I can. I'm gonna click one and enter. Application deployed URL. So this is the URL that AppFog sets up for you, so you can view it. Uh, if you have a paid plan, you can get custom domains, but for right now, they just picked one. Uh, that's fine with me. Memory reservation, 128 is fine. One's fine. Instances. Let's see. All right, so now it says create a service to bind to Laravel 3. We do want to do this because we're going to add a MySQL database, and that's considered a service to AppFog. So I'm going to type Y and then enter, and now it's going to ask me which service. I'll type 2 for MySQL, enter, specify the name of the service. They've already provided one, MySQL-696DE. Sounds good to me. Uh, create another one. Nope. Uh, would you like to save this configuration? No. Okay, so now what it's going to do is it's going to create the application. Uh, it's going to upload it to AppFog, and then it's going to deploy it. And I should be able to see it here within the next minute or so. It, sh it doesn't take too long, but sometimes, you know, depending on your internet connection. Let's see. 
Okay, so staging the application. Starting it up. Cool, we're good to go. All right, so I'm just going to copy this URL here, uh, the application deploy URL. I'm just going to copy that and post, put it in my browser and see what we got. Okay, so it looks like we're in the root directory, which is good. We got it deployed, but Laravel, all the working directory uh, stuff is inside the public folder, so we need an HT access file that tells AppFog to bypass this and just go straight to the public folder. Um, so I'm going to click on public here just to make sure that everything's going good. Okay, so there's my Laravel uh, app. Uh, so I actually have an htaccess file that I borrowed from the Laravel forums. I just searched AppFog and someone had uh, an htaccess file that, that worked. So I I'll include a link uh, in the notes. But here's the actual htaccess file that I'm going to put in the root directory of my app. I'm going to open up. Let's see, I'm going to open up this Laravel app in Sublime. I'm going to say new file, paste that in, save it in the root directory as htaccess, dot htaccess. Save, yes. Ah, Sublime, sorry. I'm going to pay for you eventually. Okay, so now I've got this htaccess file. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear out my terminal, and I'm going to say af update. Uh, Laravel dash three dash test. So this will this is the same idea as a git push. Um, uh, AF update is going to push my local changes uh, up to AppFog and then redeploy my app. So I'm going to click enter. Unfortunately, this takes a little bit of time, um, but uh, it should go by fairly quick. Okay. stopping my app, staging it, and deploying it, and we're done. Okay, so now if I go to that link, if I get rid of this public, it should show the same thing. So I'm gonna click enter, and boom, our HT access file works. So now the next big thing that we need to do is get our database uh, credentials in there. Now the way AppFog stores this is in this VCAP services JSON file, uh, and there's a good explanation of exactly how you access it uh, under documentation. I'm going to look for services, MySQL, since we picked MySQL. Uh, and then here it is. Here's an example of what the file looks like. So you can see MySQL 5.1, uh, the very first entry in the array has all your database credentials in it, including your name, your host name, uh, you know, your port, your user, your password, all that stuff. So that's what we need to get. So how do we get that? Well, luckily for us, they tell us. So I'm going to click on PHP here. It says here's a bit uh, on how to do it. Uh, we're setting um, the JSON decode of the environment variable VCAP services uh, to a services JSON string that we're creating here. And then MySQL config is having, uh, is actually getting the array uh, going into MySQL, the very first value, and then credentials. And you can see that back up here. Here's the first uh, entry in that array. And then we're getting the credentials key. And then here's their values. So let's copy this text here. Uh, I'm going to put this in my Laravel installation. So application config oops, um, database. And then I'm just at the very, very top. I'm going to just type those. That way MySQL config is an array that we will be able to access the credentials for. So I'm going to click Save. and. Let's see here. So I'm going to say MySQL config. Go scroll down to MySQL. Uh, host is going to be uh, host. Uh, database is, I think it's name, but I could be wrong. Uh, we'll check here in a second. Uh, username is uh, user. Password is password. And that should be it. You can add port if you want to. I don't think it's necessary. Um, let me make sure. Yeah, name is the name of the database. Uh, and then uh, I need to do username. OK, so I'm going to save this. So this should set our database connection uh, to the one that AppFog has created for us, the service that we've got. So I'm going to go ahead and do an, another AF update and push these changes. And meanwhile,
meanwhile I'm going to take a look at something okay alrighty so now if I refresh this page nothing should change should be fine boom so I'm there and uh, I could test the database connection by doing something like let's see I'm gonna go to my routes file and in the default route that it's got here I'm just gonna say um, uh, DB query uh, select star from entries we don't even have actually have a database or a table at all well we don't have any tables in our database yet so this should uh, spit back something bad um, but at least it will let me know if it's making a good database connection otherwise I'll get a DB connection error so let's see if this works Okay, so it deployed, click enter. Okay, so it's a syntax error, unexpected, oh crap. So now I screwed something up on the in the database file. Uh, that's strange it didn't catch it on the first way around. Uh, line 76, oh, of course, I'm stupid. It's staring me right in the face and there's my error handler. Okay, all right, so saving that. Uh, let's give this another go. And once again, hopefully, uh, the default route will be giving us some sort of error uh, that it can't find this table or something like that. We'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, it's stopping, staging, starting. Okay, so now if I click Enter... All right, so SQL state, so it was able to con uh, connect, uh, but it just says that the entries do not exist. So you can see table, it's this weird hash. Uh, so I'm successfully connected to my database, so that's good. Well, let's say, obviously, you're gonna be doing some type of local development. You can't edit uh, any files on AppFog directly, yet they do have, uh, on their roadmap, the ability to have FTP access, um, but you're not gonna have any shell access, so let's go ahead and set up a local environment and a production environment uh, database file. So the way to do this in Laravel, and I'm not sure if it's changed in Laravel 4, but you click on these, uh, or you open up the paths.php file, uh, and you'll see local is already set for you, and it just, you know, by default it assumes that you're going to be doing it on localhost. If you've got some virtual host set up, uh, you know, if you've got it Laravel 3.dev um, or something, or uh, you know whatever so what this is going to do is if it sees your application URL with localhost or any URL that ends with .dev uh, then what it's going to do is it's going to assume that you're in a local development environment and it's going to use any of your configuration files that are in your local folders so I'm gonna create one for production here production and then let's see I don't even need to have it be an array but either way I'm gonna get the URL this one so if the URL matches this uh, so anything like this in the wildcard afterwards it's going to say that it's in a produ it's in production mode now of course if you ever deploy this you can call this uh, staging if you want to like at fog if you have um, you know an app fog free where you're just going to do testing and then an app fog paid version where you're actually going to be uploading it to a production environment you could have a stage environment or development environment or whatever I'm going to just call this production uh, and let's save this and then in my config folder I'm going to create two folders I'm going to create one called production and then one called local I'm going to take this database file that I made and I'm going to put it in production and I'm also going to make a copy of it and put it in local just to prove a point. 
All right, so in my, my production file should not have changed, so I don't need to really touch that. I'm gonna go into local one, and I'm going to type, let's see, I'm gonna do die and dump. Uh, I'm in local, or I'm local, whatever. So if this uh, database file gets run on AppVog, I know something's wrong, it's including my local DB file instead. Uh, we'll see if this works. Um, but uh, my production database file is what AppFog is going to use. Uh, and so that's, that's a good way to, to test things out. I'm going to get rid of this database query thing um, and just do the return, the generic Laravel homepage. So I think that's all I need to do. I've got this set up. I've got that set up. OK, so now I'm going to do another AF update Laravel 3 test. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. I'm going to just refresh my AppFog dashboard here. You can see my app, Laravel 3 test, is running. OK. I'm going to refresh this now. And boom, we didn't get that uh, I'm local uh, warning. And that's because I'm running in a production environment because I told it to look for this. So that's how you get Laravel up and running with a database connection on AppFog. Uh, it's really nice. It's nice and slick. Uh, it it's, takes a heck of a lot of worry out of the developer's hands worrying about um, any type of DevOps, uh, which is definitely not my strong suit. So that's why I kind of appreciate AppFog. Um, but it's also a little more powerful than a shared host where you're stuck with, I don't know, limited capabilities. So that's Laravel 3. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to comment. Um, I'll, I'm here to help. I'll probably do one on Laravel 4 soon.